How do you remove the background from an image or video clip in CapCut? Let's take a look. I'm in CapCut desktop for PC. I'm in version 4.6. I've created a project. I have two clips in here. I have one of me, and then I have a green screen clip of this little campfire. Select the clip that you want to remove the background of. We'll start with the campfire. I'm going to drag my playhead over it so I can see what's going on. Then I'm going to come up to video and remove BG. If you have a paid subscription to CapCut, you've got three different options. If you're a free user, you only have one option, and that option is called chroma key. When you're using chroma key, you're replacing a color with transparency. Tell it what color to find. Whenever it finds that color, replace that with transparency. So we'll click the box next to chroma key, and it automatically enables our color picker. So you don't need to come down and click this little eyedropper tool, because when you first turn chroma key on, it automatically sets you in eyedropper color selector mode. So just bring your mouse over top of your image. So you've got a little dot in the center there. That's the actual pixel that you're over. The green ring that has a white border on the inside and the outside, that's also the color that you're removing. If we move this down and we get over top of one of these other colors, you might think, well, those are brown logs, just get rid of the brown. It's not quite that easy because there's all different shades of browns and blacks and even whites and yellows in there. But as you move your selector around, you're picking which color you'll be removing. Obviously here, we wanna get rid of the green, so we'll just come anywhere on the green because this is all identical. We'll just click that and that's removed our background in theory, but you see, we've still got a whole lot of green in here in these flames. Not good at all. For free users, the only thing that you can adjust are the intensity and the shadow. So if we dial that up, we can get rid of more green, but we very quickly start to get rid of neighboring colors to the green. Maybe we can go something like that without losing too much. I suppose that's better. In the beginning, it still has sort of a greenish tint to it. I'm going to set the intensity to about 50, and then we'll look at what the shadow does. I don't think it's going to do much for us. Not seeing a lot of change. Let's go ahead and zoom that, make that a little bit bigger. And the shadow really isn't helping the situation much one way or the other. Now, if you're a pro user and you want to use chroma key, you do also have feather edge and cleanup edge. So we can take the feather edge up. And what this is doing is just kind of blurring the difference between where it's removing green pixels and making them transparent and where whatever it color is that's right next to it. We can get rid of a little more of our green that we don't want, but notice it's also taking out some of the colors that we do want. We can also try this cleanup edge. You can slide that up and that is really helpful. We start there and we dial this up a little bit. Let's just try a little bit like that and then scrub through here. And I think that's looking a lot better as far as our fire goes. When you're doing chroma key, this is really just a process of adjusting these sliders up and down until you get rid of what you don't want and you still have what you do want. We've still got these little embers up here flying and that's pretty good. Let's go back over and look at the clip of me. Select that clip and I'll put my playhead over top of it. Chroma key is not gonna be an option for us here. If I come over and hit the chroma key, what color do I want to get rid of? Well, if I slide over here, I can get rid of that gray. I can get rid of that gray. But notice that it's also doing some creepy things to my face. It's taking color out of my face, my eyes, my neck. You'll end up with like hollow eyes. That's really weird. Even if you adjust this intensity, we can bring the, the intensity down and we can try to clean up our edges and we can try to feather the edges but we're still just not going to get where we need to be without taking out some of the subject that you don't want to get rid of. Using chroma key to get rid of a background behind a human subject requires that that background basically be one color. Now, it's not going to be really just one color, because even as you saw on our computer-generated green screen over here, we look at that and we think it's all one color. But we found out when we try to remove it that some of these spots here are not the same color green as that's out here. There's very different shades all throughout there. And there's also a little bit of green in these flames that really should stay Stay there. Also, if you've ever worked with a green screen, lighting is super important. If you have a bright light pointing at the bottom right corner of the green screen, well, that's going to be a different color than what the top left corner of the green screen is. If they're close enough, you might be able to work with some of those settings on the chroma key and get it to work out okay. 
But the other trick is, aside from the background being basically one color, that color also needs to be a color that isn't in your subject. And you might look at the image of me and say, well, these colors that are in the back, these grays that I have going on, those aren't in this image anywhere. But sure enough, this color that's going down the front of my neck, this shadow, apparently happens to be close enough to this gray that it'll wipe it out if we try and chroma key. Now we go to two other options that CapCut has. These do require a paid subscription. One is auto removal. You just check the box and let it do its thing. It'll process and give you a cutout. It's named auto removal, but it'll say applying auto cutout. Same thing. Auto cutout complete, and that looks really good. You want to scrub through here and see if there's any spots where it didn't get it cut out right, because remember, if you're 30 frames a second is what your video is in, for every second here, it's got 30 pictures that it's got to get right. And as you can see, I'm moving, I'm not sitting still, so it's trying to figure out in every frame what it's got to get rid of. I don't know why I had my hands to my face so much when I was recording that. And you'll want to check this another way, because unless you're leaving this on a black background, you want to put this over top of the actual background that you're going to be using. Because if there's still some really dark or black color back around here that didn't get cut out in some of the frames, and you're looking at it on a black background, you'll think it's okay. But you put it on a light colored background, and they'll stick out like a suck thumb on a dirty baby. And you'll be going, what happened? I thought it removed everything. So I'm just going to pop in this white background from the stock material, move things around here a little bit so that it's behind me, and I'll just go ahead and slow down the speed on that to make it quite a bit longer, and we'll make this easy. I'll just go ahead and do a freeze clip. That makes it an image, and get rid of this little sliver here. I don't need that. All this I'm doing is just to get a white background behind me so I can see if there's any dark colors that got left behind. As I'm scrubbing through the timeline here, I'm not seeing any issues. I think it did a pretty good job. I would leave that just how it is. But it doesn't always work out that well. So let's go ahead and turn off the auto removal and instead come down to this next option, which is the custom removal. Once you click custom removal, it's going to automatically turn your mouse into a smart brush. You don't have to click anything to start. You just bring it over here to the subject and you decide what is it I want to keep. Let's say I just want to keep me, no chair, no background. Come here and sort of draw around. You don't have to fill this whole thing in and, you know, color inside the lines and all that. You just need to pass through the regions that you want it to select. It did a pretty good job, but it thought that this part of the chair is also what I wanted in and I don't. So I'll come back over here and and I'll click on the smart eraser that turns my mouse into a smart eraser and I'll just swipe through that area that I want out. That worked out great. If you want to make the eraser larger or smaller, you can. The default size usually works really well unless you're dealing with something super intricate and then good luck. And you also have just a plain old eraser here. If you click this tool, it turns your mouse into an eraser. The difference between a smart eraser and the regular eraser is with the smart eraser, remember I just did that one swipe on this chair back and it took out the whole chair back. If I switch over to this manual eraser, I need to manually erase exactly where I want it to cut out. In my experience, if the smart eraser doesn't get it for you, the manual eraser probably isn't going to help because by the next frame or a little bit later in the video, whatever you thought you manually erased, it's going to struggle and bring it back. Once you have the area you want to keep selected, just hit the apply button. We'll go ahead and try it on white first. And I notice right away that as I'm scrubbing through my playhead, the chair is coming back. But if I look up here in the upper right, it's still processing. It says processing 53%. So I need to wait until it is finished processing before I can see the final results. How long it takes to process, in my experience, depends on the length of the clip that you're trying to remove the background from. You're trying to do it on a one minute clip versus a 20 minute clip. And also how many other things, especially AI things, that you have going on. If you've done image enhance and audio enhance and noise reduction and retouch going on and you're trying to do this, some of those other things may not be done, and CapCut does a terrible job of telling you that it's actually working on something. The only way you really know is if you click this and it says waiting to apply or queued for processing, that tells you it's doing something else, it's busy right now, and it'll get to this eventually. But you have no idea what order or how many other things it's doing. So if you go to export, down at the bottom, there'll be a little message that says currently processing or applying five or three or two or however many things it's working on. 
All right, it has finished processing, and right here on this frame that we're on, it's not looking good. Let's scrub around and see if that's, yeah, that's really staying in there. Oh, look, my chair just morphs back around me. Isn't that cool? So we can try with that. We can just come to a different frame where it is a problem like this, and we can just come up here and click our smart eraser. And for whatever reason, it has all of this on both sides selected as part of what we want to keep, and that's not the case. So I'm going to wipe a line over there, and I'm going to swipe a line over here too. Now it's going to go back into processing mode. I haven't found any noticeable difference whether you go ahead and click apply now while it's processing or whether you wait till it gets to 100 and then click apply. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply now. You know, it appears to you, at least on this frame, that it's done. So you have to pay attention to up top here where it says applying customized or over here where it says processing. All right, it's all finished. Let's scrub through and see what we got. And that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and hide this white background so that we can scan through on black and make sure that there aren't any lighter colors that we just didn't notice in the white background. And it looks like it took out everything it should have and not anything it shouldn't have. So we'll call that a win. Those are the three different ways that you can remove the background in CapCut. You've got the chroma key or green screen if you have a solid color background behind your subject. That is not a color you're going to find in the subject. You've got the auto cutout, which works really well. As far as the video editors that have an automatic background removal in them, CapCut does a really, really good job. For me, it does much better than Descript. It does better than Camtasia. Asia, and I'm happy with CapCut's auto removal most of the time. And when it can't figure it out, I can usually get it right with the custom removal. Not always, it depends on the situation. One big tip I'll give you about backgrounds and cutouts and green screens and all of that is lighting. Lighting makes all the difference because shadows turn to gray and black pretty quick and brightly lit things turn into whites and pale yellows and other colors that you might not pop into your head right away or actually in there. Hey, I hope you found this helpful. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.